over the past few years, I have put a lot of miles in the Saucony Endorphin series, particularly the third generation here. Put 300 miles on this pair of Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. I put 300 miles on another pair of the Speed 3 as well. Absolutely loved this shoe. It's got a nice gentle roll to it. It wasn't my favorite for long runs, not the most support here in the forefoot, but a nice poppy ride that was great for everyday miles as well as some faster stuff then the pro 3 was a great racing partner to the speed 3 here had a nice pop to it i love the carbon fiber plate and the power on pb foam that they had in this third generation of shoes was just amazing and i raced my first marathon in this guy the charlotte marathon in 2022 now this year moving on to the saucony endorphin speed 4 in pro 4 also started to put a lot of great miles in these two shoes. I did a 100 mile week in the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 here, and it is a pretty big departure from the Speed 3 over here. It's a little bit of a, I don't wanna say firmer ride, but it feels like there's a little bit more to it going on than we get in the Speed 3. It's not as gentle, it's not as friendly, but I know a lot of you guys out there are enjoying this one for some faster miles. And I did do a really solid 22 mile long run in it. So it's got some pep to it. It's got some flair. They added some more rubber coverage down here. And I think a lot of you guys are gonna love this one for training. And then we have the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 here, which I've absolutely loved for comfortable distance miles. I put in a 26.2 mile long run, a marathon time trial came in at around two hours and 55 minutes in this guy. So put it through a marathon test and it performed really well. So today I wanna to focus on the Speed 4 and the Pro 4, go over all of the changes to these two. And this is a highly requested video comparing how these two match up and who should get the Speed 4 versus who should get the Pro 4. This is the training version of the shoe with the plastic plate. This is the racing version of the shoe with the carbon fiber plate. But there are some differences in this generation of shoes versus the past generation of shoes that are gonna make the choice here a little bit different than it was last year. So I'm super excited for this comparison today. Let's get into it. I right, guess one more note before we get into it today. If you aren't sure which shoe you should get and you're looking for your next shoe, go ahead to subwell.io and check out the running shoe matcher tool. So you go to subwell.io, go to the shoe matcher tab, and you can answer five questions and we will match you with the best shoe for you. Could be the Speed 4, could be the Pro 4. You tell us whether you like soft shoes, whether you like firm shoes, whether you want a training shoe or a racing shoe. We got all the information in there. You take a little quiz and you get paired with the best shoe for you. And then also, if you want to just see my favorite shoes right now, you can go to the Our Picks tab and you can see my 10 favorite shoes. And then we also got the database for the true nerds. You can just scroll through dozens of shoes and see what the drops are, what the specs are. So no matter how you like to shop, you can find your next running shoe at supple.io. All right, guys, so quick overview of the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 and Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. So the Speed 4 is Saucony's speed training shoe in the lineup. Both of these shoes use the Power on PB foam. Well, this is a PIBA compound. So PIBA is the market standard for fast training and fast racing foams. And Saucony's formulation of it here it has these little beads. So you can see on the bottom here, the Speed 4, all these tiny what look like cracks, but they're not cracks. It's these little pellets in the midsole. And in this generation of the Speed 4, it seems like they've made the foam a little bit different across the two shoes. I'm not sure exactly. It does have a different ride, but it is billed as the same exact foam. And then of course, in the Speed 4 here, you got the plastic plate. That's gonna give the shoe a tiny bit more flexibility than what we see in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 here, which is the racing version of the shoe. So as the racing version of the shoe, this guy gets the full carbon fiber length plate. That's gonna give a little bit more snap. So what carbon does versus plastic, carbon has more energy return. What that means is as you're running fast, as you're picking up that pace, you get what you're putting into the shoe back to you in the form of a little pop forward. So whereas in the Speed 4, the plastic plate really stabilizes the foam. In the Pro 4, it also stabilizes it, but it's going to give you a little bit more of that bounce and snap back. Now, other key difference between these two is Speed 4 here, a little bit heavier. It's got a little bit more of a built-up upper here. The bottoms are pretty similar with the amount of rubber coverage that we see on here. But the Pro 4 also has a little bit of this Power Run HG out here in the back, whereas the Speed 4 is 100% of the Power Run PB. 
So diving a little bit deeper into the midsole, starting with the Socket Endorphin Speed 4. So the Socket Endorphin Speed 4 has a little bit less stack in the heel here. It's got about 37, 38, depending on what measurement you use. I think Running Warehouse has this at 37 millimeters in the heel here, whereas the Socket Endorphin Pro 4 is all the way up at 40 millimeters in the back here. And now both of these midsoles are using that power on PB, but for some reason, the Pro 4 here just feels a little bit easier to run in. It doesn't feel as disconnected. It's got a really nice smooth roll here. And if you look at the bottom here, one of the issues I had with the Speed 4 versus the Pro 4 is that the Speed 4 felt like it had a two-part midsole where the back of the shoe was hitting first and then the front was hitting. Whereas in the Pro 4, I didn't get that at all. This was a really nice smooth ride, definitely on the softer side, whereas the Speed 4 felt a little bit choppy, awkward, and clunky. So the midsoles do use the same foam, but for some reason, the Pro 4 just rides a lot smoother and cleaner for me. In the Pro 4, we do see that HG. I'm not sure how much of it is in the midsole. Saucony doesn't disclose how much of it is all throughout. And by the way, this orange here, this is paint. This is not the Power Run HG. You can see there are little beads all throughout here. So this is still the Power Run PB. I believe the HG might just be on the top here, right up at the sock liner. Let's see. Uh, I can't even take, I can't even take out the sock liner. Maybe we'll have to rip out the sock liner to see. <laughs> So it's not clear how much that HG you're getting. And for me, it doesn't add a ton of difference to the ride of the Pro 4 versus the Pro 3, but it did feel like the forefoot was maybe a little bit softer than the Pro 3, which is interesting. Now, heading up to the upper, this was one of the areas that I really loved about the Socket Endorphin Pro 4. And you can see on the Pro 3, you have more of a traditional upper here. Both are really nice. This is a nice breathable mesh. It's got a little bit of a stretch to it. And you got a gusseted tongue here in the Speed 4. But the Pro 4 just takes it to the next level. You got the tongue connected to the upper. It's one piece. It's almost like a sock upper. I absolutely love this thing. You got a nice little bit of stretch here. It is super comfortable. I think this might be the best upper of 2024 so far i'm absolutely in love with what they did here both of these are on the narrower side the pro 4 might have a little bit more room due to the stretch we get and due to the sock in it maybe allowing a little bit more of volume so if you have a taller foot pro 4 might be a little bit of a better choice but both of these are pretty narrow you can see in the front here they both got that taper up at the front and heading down to the back we got a similar amount of padding speed 4 because it's a training shoe might have a little bit more but these are both comparable i had no issues with the heel lockdown or any rubbing out here on the back but you are going to get a little bit more flexibility in the pro 4 you can see i can push this all the way down this heel counter here pretty flexible in the pro 4 versus the speed 4 i can't push that down at all now one issue or quirk of the pro 4 here on the left look how narrow this heel is and it's not just the upper back here it's also the foam and so one issue that i had when running at the end of these long runs that i've done in the pro 4 well the one 26 mile marathon time trial i did was the stability kind of got a little bit weird toward the end of that run and i'm not sure if it was the shoe or me but one issue is that my foot pokes off of the side here because it's so narrow my left heel hangs out of the side of the platform versus the speed four that doesn't happen you can see how much wider it is and you got that structured heel counter so a little bit more width in the back of the speed four here overall from the foam to the heel counter to the upper pro four is very narrow in the heel which can create a little bit of an awkward feeling at some paces and in terms of the laces here both of these guys got the same exact laces. So nice stretchy laces. Well, I'm not sure if they're the same exact, but they feel very similar. Nice stretchy laces. I had no issues with lacing them and the fit and lockdown on both of these uppers is great, but gotta give it to Pro 4 for that single piece sock knit vibe. All right guys, now heading down to the outsole, you can see they've put the same exact outsole layer exactly on both of these guys. It's actually pretty uncanny looking at them. It is the same exact rubber, same exact layout, same exact everything. So the durability should be the same exact thing across both of these shoes and the grip and wet traction also should be the same. Now for that time trial I did in the Socket Indoor from Pro 4, it was actually pouring rain and this thing was awesome for that. I had no issues with cornering. I had no issues flying down hills. I had no issues charging up hills. I also didn't have that many issues getting water into the bottom of the shoe. So this is gonna be a great wet weather shoe. I'm really impressed at the traction here. If you compare it to what we got on the Pro 3 and the Speed 3, you can see the Pro 3 has a good amount of rubber, but it's 
I don't know, it's not as grippy. And you can see on my hand, just moving it here, it's pretty slick. That issue is resolved on the Pro 4 with this lattice work rubber. It feels a lot grippier. And then Speed 3 here, you can see it. you have more cutouts in the rubber here and it just didn't bite the ground as well as what we got in this Speed 3. So outsole is the same across these. So that shouldn't be a huge consideration if you're deciding between these shoes, but just know that you are gonna get some good wet weather performance between these two. Now this is counterintuitive, but thinking about durability on these guys, I tend to not get the best luck with this Power Run PB foam. So this shoe right here, the Socket Endorphin Speed 3, this has about 300 miles. That's the same thing as the Socket Endorphin Pro 3. And I'm actually getting a little bit better performance out of the Pro 3. I think because the carbon fiber plate makes the foam feel fresher for longer versus in the Speed 3, when that pop starts to go from the foam, the plastic plate doesn't really do much to give it that benefit. So I am thinking, in the fourth generation here, we're gonna see better durability and most people are gonna be happier at that 300 mile mark with the Pro 4. And with this having such a friendly training ride, and let's, let's dive into the ride. With this having such a friendly training ride, I think a lot of people are gonna love it for racing as well as training and that will give it the ability to go up to that 250, 300 mile mark without any issue. And so while this does ride like a carbon plated shoe, it isn't as harsh as a lot of the other racing shoes on the market and the foam pairs really nicely with that carbon plate. And I love how this felt for long runs. I love how this felt for a lot of time on feet. It is probably the most comfortable out of all the marathon racing shoes out there. And so at $225, this is a really good value in a racing shoe because you can train in it and it will feel normal. You can race in it and it will still give you that oomph. I took it to a sub three marathon and it performed really well. Speed four on the other hand, it has all the elements to be a good shoe, but something about it just felt awkward for me. I don't know if it's what they did with this heel foam extending out in the back, but you can see the Pro 4 has the same thing and I didn't have that awkward disconnected feel, but I just did not love the feeling of this shoe as much. And there is a $50 difference between these guys, but I think most runners out there are gonna get a lot more value out of a shoe like the Pro 4. And if you pair this with a normal everyday running shoe without a plate, something like from the Saucony line, the Saucony Ride, or the Nike Vomero, or the Adidas Audi Zero SL, the list, the Asics Gel Cumulus, the list goes on. But you could do a two shoe rotation where you paired the Gel Cumulus in this or the nike pegasus in this and that could handle most of your runs you could use this for speed work you could use this for long runs you could use your non-plated everyday running shoe for daily miles and recovery runs and so with this being such a friendly shoe for a variety of paces and it felt awesome for me every single run i've done in it every single pace i've done in it versus the speed four here to me it feels like you got to run a certain way for this to really work well and I had some good runs in it looking up the metrics, but the feeling just wasn't there. It doesn't have that same special feeling that I enjoyed so much out of the Speed 3 with a nice gentle roll. It feels pretty similar, but that 10%, 15% difference really comes through in that awkward feeling. And there's no awkwardness at all in the Pro 4. It's a super smooth ride. And so for that 50 extra dollars, I think most people are gonna be happy with the Pro 4 here and happier with this for the long term, especially because I anticipate the durability on this thing is gonna be pretty good. Now, if you do not want a carbon fiber plated ratio, the Speed 4 could be a good choice for you, especially if you are a lighter runner, if you don't want that harsher feeling, if you don't think you're gonna get the most benefit out of a carbon plate, I do think most people are gonna get a lot of benefit from the carbon plate in here because it's not a harsh ride. So Speed 4 could be a good choice if you don't want that plate and if you don't want to spend $200. But at that 170 mark, I think there's a lot better options out there on the market for a plated training shoe. You could go Puma Deviate Nitro 2. If you want something that's friendly for everyday miles, you could go Boston 12 if you want something a little bit firmer or faster. Or you could go SC Trainer V2 if you want something that's more relaxed. That is 180 MSRP, but we do see that on sale a lot of the time. So. I don't recommend the Speed 4 for a lot of people. If you loved the Speed 3 and you want to try the next version, then I would go ahead and pick this up. I know some lighter runners are enjoying this as a hybrid training racing shoe, those who like the Speed 3, but I think most of you out there are going to be happier with the Speed 4. So overall, the Speed 4 is an awesome value. I put it through the marathon test. So this would be, I don't always do winners between these comparisons, but this is the clear winner here for me. At $225, it's $25 cheaper than most of the racing shoes on the market. It's not the most aggressive feel, but that means it's a really nice shoe for everyday running. So this is the one that I would buy 
out of these two. I don't recommend running in carbon plated shoes every day. So pairing this with a simple shoe like a Pegasus, an Audi Zero SL, or even a higher stack shoe like the Nova Blast would be a nice two shoe rotation. And this is also a great shoe if you're looking for your first carbon fiber plated racing shoe. So I highly recommend the Socket Endorphin Pro 4. This will be going on my list of my top picks. I'll make sure to update that today. You can see the rest of my top picks at the link Hello. What's up guys? Just finishing editing here, a little meta macro moment. And I have added the Pro 4 to the My Picks page. So I'll put that in the link below. You can also see my other picks. I've added the Rebel V4, I've added the Gara, I've added the Nova Blast. I won't spoil the rest, but these are my 10 favorite running shoes right now. I also wanted to quickly go over some of those alternatives that I offered for the Speed 4 because I do think there are some great training shoes on the market with a plate. It's just not gonna be the Speed 4 this year. Okay, right, so I know not everyone's gonna want the full carbon fiber plated racing shoe that we have in the Pro 4, and so that's why some of you might be considering the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 here, but I really don't think it's the best at any one thing when I think about what's offered in a great plated training shoe. So I pulled out a few of those shoes that I mentioned earlier, and I wanted to quickly go over these three guys right here and let you know which one might be the best for you if you were considering getting that plastic plated Speed 4. All right, so popping these guys on the table here, these would be my three main plated training shoe recommendations. Now, the Puma Deviate Nitro 2 is probably the closest in spirit to what that Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 offers and what the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 offered. And by the way, the Speed 3 would probably be the closest thing to the Speed 4 if you want another shoe, but these are the current model versions. So Puma Deviate Nitro 2, this has a nice softer feel. It's a little bit more flexible than some of the other plated training shoes out there. It doesn't use a full length carbon plate. It has carbon composite and it has two foams here. So in the heel, it's got a firmer nitro foam and then we get this nitro elite on the top layer. So a really nice, easy to run and ride. I do have to say it's not the most protective. The stack is, I think it's been measured to be in the 20s in the forefoot. So if you're going for long runs, a lot of the time over two hours, over two and a half hours, you might wanna get the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4, or you might wanna get one of these two other shoes that I have in the back here, but this is a great option for everyday miles. It's got a little bit more pep and fun than a typical daily trainer like a Pegasus or a Gel Cumulus. And then it has this awesome Puma Grip outsole here, which is one of the best for running in the rain. So great option for daily miles in the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. Next, we have the New Balance SC Trainer V2. So this thing is a mega stacked beast. There is a ton of foam underfoot here. And my guy Vinny B actually told me in the comments, he got 450 miles out of his pair of SC Trainer V2. This is just a super fun, relaxing shoe to run in. And I said yesterday in my video of all the shoes that I tested this year, if I weren't testing so many shoes, I'd probably have either this or the 1080 on my foot for every single relaxed aerobic run that I'm not doing a speed workout because it's just that comfortable. So if you're looking for comfort in a plated training shoe, but you still want a little bit of that pop, you got this full carbon fiber plate in here. You got decent outsole coverage. That's probably the weak point of the shoe. There's not a lot of rubber here and you can see them starting to wear through the rubber, but the foam is nice and soft, nice and bouncy. It doesn't force you to run too fast. And this is actually a really similar feeling shoe to the Socket Endorphin Pro 4, but it's going to be $180 versus $220. It's not the best for speed work, but that's not what this shoe is about. It's more for getting time on feet in comfort with a little bit of extra pop. And now last recommendation here, Adidas Boston 12. This is my all time favorite plated training shoe. This is a great shoe for speed work. It's got two foams like the Puma DVA Nitro 2. It's got a firmer, more stable foam on the bottom here. It's a traditional EVA. Then on the top, you have Adidas's Light Strike Pro. This is their top tier racing foam. It's fun, it's fast, it's a little bit bouncy. And this does take some time to break in, but once it does, it really shines for any faster running. I don't love this for everyday miles, and if you want something more for everyday training with a little bit of pop, I would go for one of these two here, but if you want something for faster speed workouts for long runs with marathon pace, if you're training for a marathon and you want something that can do any type of workout out there, that's where I'd go for the Boston 12. So this guy probably has the firmest ride out of these shoes, also a little bit of a firmer ride than the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4, but if you are a bigger runner, a stronger runner, 
you would really benefit from this, especially with the two foams here. Then you do have the energy rods on the bottom here, which is a little bit different than a full carbon fiber plate. It adds a bit more flexibility side to side, but it gives you a lot of pop here. So guys, those would be my three recommendations. If you're considering the Speed 4, I would take one of these three instead of that shoe. And of course, the Pro 4 is an awesome shoe for racing. It is a little bit more on the comfortable side, not the fastest racing option, but a really awesome shoe. So I appreciate you guys watching. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another video. And if you are interested in buying one of these shoes, make sure to do so from Subwell because doing that will support the channel. All right, guys, I'll be back tomorrow with another video.